And our last speaker of this session is Adam Freund from Calico. Hi, Adam, can you hear us? I can, yes, thank you. Perfect. Yeah. If you're ready, you can just share your presentation. First of all, thank you to the organizers for inviting me uh, to this meeting. It's uh, certainly a unique format, but it's been going really well, and I've really enjoyed all the talks so far. Um, today, I will be talking about a program that we have at Calico Life Sciences, the biotech company where I work, which is focused on inhibiting uh, pregnancy-associated plasma protein A, or as we call it, PAP A. And we do this to reduce IGF signaling. And uh, so obviously disclosure, I do work for a for-profit biotechnology company. Um, we are a Google-owned biotech company that's interested in targeting aging and age-related disease. And so obviously um, IGF signaling was of interest to us. And just to introduce the target, um, we came across this target in the literature about four or five years ago. And uh, we landed on it because inhibition of IGF signaling was at that time and remains the most validated aging intervention known. And so we were interested in targeting it. However, we knew as, as everyone does that <clears throat> targeting core pathway members, IGF-1, IGF-1R uh, is lethal. And if we target things like growth hormone receptor, we get undesirable endocrine compensation. And so we were looking for a novel strategy. And we came across this protease, PAP-A. It's an extracellular IGF-BP protease that increases local IGF bioavailability. And the way that it does that is by, I hear it is uh, represented as the scissors, not, not a crystal structure. Oh, excuse me. Um, and it cleaves IGF binding proteins that are binding IGF-1 and sequestering it. Once it cleaves those binding proteins, the IGF can signal through its receptor. So more PAP-A leads to more IGF signaling. And when we inhibit PAP-A, we get less IGF signaling. <clears throat> now it was published in the literature uh, from Cheryl Conover's group that PAP-A knockout mice live quite a bit longer than wild type as well as having extended health span. And it was published in 2017 by the same group that inducible PAP-A knockout at five months also extends lifespan almost as much as germline knockout which was uh, really compelling to us because of course we were trying to think of this as a potential therapeutic to be dosed during adulthood. And so we developed a antibody against PAPA and neutralizing antibody. And as a first order of business, we decided to see what the effects were in regular healthy adult mice when we dosed for four months. And so we did this, uh, this was a, an experiment where we had five to six males and females per group dosing for four months of age. And we collected nine different tissues and subjected them to RNA-seq. And we, the analysis that we performed was a cross-tissue analysis because we were interested in identifying any mechanisms that were consistent across all of these different tissues. So we looked for genes that were coordinately up or down regulated. And what we found was the most differentially expressed gene across all of these tissues was IGF-BP5, uh, and it was down regulated. And this was good news because IGF-BP5 shows up as a transcriptional read out of IGF signaling. When IGF signaling is reduced, IGF BP5 tends to be reduced, uh, presumably as a partial compensatory response. Conversely, when IGF signaling is increased, uh, IGF BP5 tends to go up. And so seeing it go down suggests that we were in fact inhibiting IGF signaling across uh, all or at least most of these tissues. The other thing that we noticed when we uh, performed go ontology analysis was that the most enriched go terms were around collagen and extracellular matrix genes. And we plotted these genes in red on the cross tissue volcano plot. What we saw was there was a clear de-enrichment for these genes. That is to say, most of the red dots are on the left side of the volcano plot. And uh, that indicates that these genes are being down-regulated across multiple tissues. To our knowledge, this had never been described before, not for PAPE or for really any other IGF inhibition strategy. And so we were interested in how this might happen and what the tissue level effects were beyond just gene expression. And so we chose to focus uh, more deeply on the bone marrow because it was one of the tissues that was well, easily accessible, um, but also it was one of the tissues that showed the strongest decrease in igf 5 So we thought we had a really good on mechanism proof of concept tissue. And so we looked at uh, three different readouts of sort of organ function in the bone marrow. And those are bone formation, hematopoietic uh, cellularity or hematopoiesis and bone marrow adiposity. And what we noticed was in all three cases, we saw a reduction in the major functional output of that, that uh, process. So in bone formation, we saw reduced bone formation rate, uh, which is what this BFR over BS is. And we saw that in both males and females. 
um, Pape always in blue here, controls always in red. Uh, for hematopoiesis, we saw a reduction in overall bone marrow cellularity, and that was driven largely by a reduction in myeloid cells, as you can see here. Um, and we looked at a few other cell categories, but they were not significantly reduced. And so we also looked at bone marrow adiposity, which is increasingly being recognized as an important function of the bone marrow. And we saw there too, there was a significant, although subtle decrease um, due to anti pap treatment. And so this, uh, this was interesting and we couldn't immediately make sense of this because these are three fairly disparate processes. Um, they don't, are not generally thought to involve the same cell types. However, it occurred to us that if we sorted out cell types from the bone marrow, we might be able to identify the cells that were producing a lot of PAP A, and that might help us refine our mechanism of action hypothesis. And so we did that. We uh, sorted out a few cell types based on some prior ideas that we had. This wasn't uh, a full assessment of the bone marrow, but we looked at hematopoietic cells, looking at HSCs and their downstream progeny. We also looked at uh, mesenchymal stromal cells, so MSCs. And when we, we subjected all of these sort of populations to RNA-seq, and we looked for where PAP-A was expressed. First, we checked to make sure that the marker genes were correctly expressed from each of these categories. And these are these yellow blocks here. You can see that each category, each cell type does in fact express its known marker genes. When we looked at PAP-A, its substrates and IGF-1, its downstream effector, we saw that they were all strongly enriched in MSCs and essentially not expressed at all in any of the hematopoietic compartments. Um, we looked at single cell RNA sequencing data that had been previously published of the bone marrow stroma. So the only stromal population in the previous experiment that we looked at were these MSCs, but of course there are other stromal populations in the bone marrow. And this experiment looks at most, if not all of them. And so what we found looking at querying this data set is that MSCs indeed express PAPE almost as really a unique marker uh, more than any other stromal cell or as shown in the previous slide, any other hematopoietic cell. And so that led us to hypothesize that these MSCs were the effectors of PAPE inhibition in the bone marrow uh, and possibly in other tissues as well. And so we decided to look at the transcriptomic profile of these MSCs. And what we found was, as expected, of course, they had high PAPE. We knew that from the previous slide. And what we, we also found, and what wasn't immediately obvious to us, was that these cells had GO terms that were identical to the GO terms that are reduced uh, when we inhibited with PAP-A. So that being, to put it another way, these cells expressed a lot of collagen-containing extracellular matrix genes, which are, of course, the genes that were decreased upon PAP-A inhibition. We then decided to look at what happened to these MSCs when we dosed with anti-PAP-A. So first, we dosed with anti-PAP-A for just a week, because in experiments that I, I don't have time to show here, we had determined that we didn't really need four months to see this effect. We actually could see it uh, fairly acutely and in otherwise healthy wild-type uh, adult animals. And so we dosed for a week. We isolated these MSCs, and again, we did RNA sequencing. And we saw that IGF-PP5, that marker of IGF signaling, was one of the most strongly reduced genes. And we didn't see this in several other populations that we sorted out, including some hematopoietic populations. And so this told us that the, the immediate effect of anti a or at least the, the one week effect of anti a is that it reduces IGF signaling in these bone marrow MSCs. And when we looked at bone marrow MSC number, here I'm showing you after four weeks of dosing, but we actually see the same thing uh, after one week of dosing, we saw a, uh, a statistically significant and, and quite impressive decrease in bone marrow MSC number from anti -PAP a treatment. And this again is over a fairly short time period. Um, to our knowledge, not many interventions are known to modulate adult MSC homeostasis in this way and this acutely. And so this is pretty interesting to us. Now, we knew that this was happening in the bone marrow, but of course, when we initially did our cross tissue profile of anti -PAP a activity and anti -PAP a effects, we saw that uh, collagen and ECM genes were downregulated across many um, tissues. And so we asked, well, are these MSC-like cells present in other tissues as well? And so we uh, queried the tabular morris, which is, uh, I'm sure many of you know, is a, a broad um, database of single cell RNA sequencing data from many different tissues in the mouse. And what we found was, and you can, you can query this on your own if you're interested in the details, it's, uh, it's really got a nice user interface online. Um, but what we found was that PAPE was enriched in cell types that were very similar, if not identical, to the mesenchymal stromal cell population that we saw in the bone marrow. So that was mesenchymal stromal cells themselves in adipose tissue, lung, 
uh, muscle, mammary gland, trachea, it was things like stellate cells, which depending on the field you're from can be considered a type of mesenchymal stromal cell. And that was in the pancreas, other types of mesenchymal stem cells, um, as well as myofibroblasts, which are really a, a cell type that has acquired a more mesenchymal-like identity, and that was in the heart. And so this led us to believe that perhaps the reason we were affecting collagen and ECM gene expression in all of these tissues was that we were reducing the activity or the number of MSC-like cells in all of these tissues. Now, this was all in mice. Um, and so we also queried some single cell RNA sequencing databases from human tissues. And here, what we found looking specifically at the pancreas, if you remember on the previous slide, we saw that pancreatic stellate cells expressed a lot of PAPE in mouse. We find the same thing in humans. And so here uh, you can see these clusters, this tiny cluster right here are stellate cells. You can see that they are enriched for PAPE. <clears throat> They're also enriched for collagen 3A1, which was one of the top most down-regulated genes uh, from anti-PAPE treatment in our, in our mouse study. So this suggests that this biology is conserved in human beings and, uh, and was quite exciting to us. So there's obviously more work to do here. We'd like to profile these other tissues and really uh, lock down that causal chain and, and prove or at least test that the, uh, the MSCs are really involved in this process. But to highlight what we found so far, um, IGF signaling is a valid aging intervention. It's something that we were very interested in approaching from a therapeutic perspective, um, but that's challenging. And so we focused on this side player in the pathway, PAPE. And we found that PAPE inhibition reduces collagen ECM gene expression. This, this was really a novel um, result and one that we didn't expect. But we dialed down into this mechanism of action. And we found that this was probably mediated by these mesenchymal stromal cells. Um, they're the source of PAPE in bone marrow, as well as it looks like other tissues, and they seem to be the primary responders to PAPE inhibition. When we reduce MSC activity, um, we both restrain their functional output, as shown by the functional output of three different aspects of the bone marrow, and we think we uh, are, it's probably the mechanism that drives the system-wide response to PAPE inhibition that is reduced uh, ECM gene expression. And we plan to try to understand if this is, in fact, a mechanism by which uh, PAPE drives aging-related pathology and by which PAPE inhibition restrains aging. Uh, we don't know that for sure, but I think it's an interesting hypothesis. And uh, long story short, we think that this may be a safe and effective therapeutic strategy for reducing nitro ceiling, and we plan to continue to pursue it in the future. It's, uh, it's a team effort. There's a lot of people involved, both from Calico, uh, from our partners at AbbVie, and from our collaborators at Beth Israel Vikings Medical Center. So thank you all very much for your attention, and I will take any questions. Thanks, Adam, for a great talk. Um, we can start with a question from Yudi Pen Sama. What about the role of potential tissue-specific regulators? The role of potential, uh, potential tissue-specific regulators of PAPE? Um, he just asked if you could please uh, share your thoughts on the role of potential tissue-specific regulators. Uh, okay, um, I, assuming that that means that it is uh, regulators of PAPE, we don't actually know what regulates PAPE and what drives its differential expression. That is uh, an active area of research uh, within my lab. It's a great question. Okay, we have time for one other question from Morton. Um, fantastic talk, Adam. I'm wondering if these changes in ECM are also seen in the brain. We have not looked in the brain. That is a great question. Uh, PAPE is not reported to be highly expressed in the brain, but it is an extracellular uh, secreted protein, so it is possible that it makes its way into the brain, um, and so we, we should look. Okay, and there are many more questions on Slack, so it would be also great if you can just answer them on Slack. But okay, uh, thanks for joining us today.